There we go. <gasps> We're there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. But how many people have given up on us? I know you might have all given up. Of course, it might just say so. Um, hopefully, it says that we are now on YouTube. Yes. So, so um, hopefully that will be the case. Right. So. You didn't miss anything super exciting yet. Um, if you are uh, just coming in, we are just getting onto YouTube. So apologies if that is the case. And uh, oh, look, sixteen. Yep. Oh, oh, there we, we go. Just, we bumped right up. So, we did. so apologies. Uh, YouTube was having some issues. Basically, all that you have missed so far is we were running through the individual features that yep. the Accolade has, which is today's machine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we haven't actually sewn or threaded or done anything like that. No. We we're just walking through. We've just um, been uh, given the Cliff Notes version, hoping that uh, YouTube was going to start uh, behaving. So, for us. the um, only other piece of information that's not then here is the the price yeah so this machine um is currently on sale for 2,999 yep um plus there's some other things which we'll cover but the re the rebate I had on that front page in there so this does yep. have a 250 dollars mail-in rebate um that you'll get back after the fact mm -hmm. if you decide to go with this machine absolutely um actually I think you had it right here I was almost there oh <laughs> well, there you go. But I'm not sure that I had the 250 listed oh, okay. on that. Yep. So, so we have our bundle. Oh, yep. Here we are. We've been having some issues. No, don't see you. Just hear us. Uh, well, we I'm our guessing pictures. That, that was probably there prior to. Um, yep. Hopefully. Hopefully it'll just give it a second, and hopefully it'll all pan. Um, Dean, I apologize. I'm not sure what. Please mention which ones have the presser foot interlock. interlock. I, um, I'm not sure what If you could just clarify what you mean there, I'm not entirely sure, but we would be happy to talk to you about that. Um, so our bundle for our accolade has the inspiration guide, a six foot kit, the 60 day love of knowledge. There is a small thread collection and the thread kits will vary. They won't be the same for everybody. Ooh. Um, and then we are doing our Labu bucks, so 10% up off of the machine, up to $300. This Which would is be pretty much you're going to get that $300. So. Oh, okay. So, oh, so you can't sew with the oh the with foot the foot up. up. Those um, specifically, the Acclaim or the Triumph. Yep, those are, are the, the two only that have two. that. So ne for the next two weeks after this, we'll be sewing on machines that have that feature. That have that feature built in. And this unfortunately is not one of them. No, and I think part of that is this is on the original frame, mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know if there was no room in there, no room right. at the end, right. or whatnot, but um, this was on the original frame that this particular style of machine was built on, mm -hmm. so they haven't changed that. The Acclaim is on a larger frame, and so is the Triumph, so yep. I'm guessing it has something to do with that. The size. Um, mm -hmm. But... Uh, yeah, it maybe, is a wonderful thing. You're not wrong. Maybe but. they'll refresh the line at some point. I really can't see them doing anything else with the Triumph. I don't know where I they don't could know where they could go possibly go. But I could definitely see them updating the the style These style for that. machines to have maybe put this on the same type of frame as the Acclaim mm -hmm. with that little extra something there. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Um, you know, the, these machines have been very solid for a very long time. They have. So, they have. Um, um, and then last but not least in the bundle, uh, it doesn't come from us, but it's that rebate that Lisa was talking about. Yes. So that is going to be $250 back to you on like a Visa, MasterCard type thing when you register your, your purchase machine. on babylock.com and then you go to babylock.com forward slash rebates. Yep. And, and you type in some information and boom. There you have they it. They will send that to you. Yeah. So, a lot of of power in this package for sure and all of that um we haven't changed the price point or anything so all of that mm -hmm. at that that 2999 price point yep so the only thing Oops. that you would probably might consider adding on outside of maybe a specialty foot here and there if it's not included in the six foot kit is maybe the love of sewing yep. and the love of sewing we did talk about last week it's not any different then um, really what we talked about last week right. is going to extend out your warranty to include not only um, cleanings and, and repairs, mm -hmm. but it also has the, the video package in there. So you get yep. the so ed, love of knowledge, whatever you want to call that, 
um, it is all built in part of that package. So those videos are minimum of $20 a piece mm -hmm. in general. There's a few out there that are a little less, but most of them are at least 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, so it doesn't take long to uh, want to watch a couple of videos and, and have that add up. Not to mention a cleaning for this machine. Mm -hmm. um, it's about 200 bucks. It's yeah, so it's, it's only a couple foot. only only a couple cleanings in and um you can get one a year. So um that pays for it. It, right it there. pays for it right there. So it is definitely uh an advantage. Mm -hmm. But there's certainly no pressure from our end. Um nope. You can think of it like you're prepaying for your cleanings and um and if you move or you travel or yes. you are you go to some retreat and you have some sort of an issue with your machine, you can take it to whatever baby lock baby dealer lock is, is by there. wherever you're at. Mm -hmm. And if, with the love of sewing, they would be able to take care of that for you yep. as a warranty to repair. Yep, they would not need to charge you for that, which is really a fantastic. It's, it's great because that's not the normal way. Not that they go. break, but you know, it's kind of like like well, you said, CYOA. <laughs> You just never know. You you definitely uh, don't ever know what's going to happen. And it's only when you're at a retreat and you have nothing else to do except for whatever's on that machine that you're trying to get to work and you mm -hmm. can't get it to work, being able to take it into a local place and have that covered. Mm -hmm. um, it could be as simple as I tried to put something through the looper I shouldn't have and it's now jammed. Right. Well, being able to get that fixed would be really, really great. Yeah. So um, there you go. Yeah, it's it it really is great, and um, like I said, it's nice to have a little peace of mind, just to know that everything is going to be covered. Absolutely. Um, and then this is just a picture of the different of the types different of techniques. Techniques. I didn't add the lace on there. I got to add the crochet lace. I forgot to do that. Um, We're going to be talking about pin tucks today. Yep. So, so that that's... top left corner there. Last week we talked about the little heart shaped one below that, and then the rectangle one over there on the top right that also has the flower mm -hmm. in the corner. Those were the uh, flat lock and the piping mm -hmm. techniques. And those we covered last week and yep. this week, as she said, we're going to do those pin tucks. So uh, we'll talk about threading and all of those good things. Yep. And so here we go. So um, we're going to do, maybe we'll, we'll just start with the pin tuck stuff. Yeah. Because we're kind of already, we're already threaded, threaded that, there. And then we'll work. And then we'll take it all unthreaded and we'll and show you we'll how to do stuff. And then we'll work backwards. So that, that sounds great. Yeah. I like that. So we're going to do pin tucks. So in order to create pin tucks, you will need a pin tucking foot and you will need thread. And we want to do a narrow cover hem. So I've put the little information on what you're going to do, make your adjustments to uh, on the left-hand side there, which says the narrow cover hem stitch. This is basically the two needles, your stitch length, um, what you're going to uh, make your needle tension and your looper tension. So there are a little bit of things that you will adjust with this, but that is really all you have to do in the setup part. You don't need to worry at all about your ABCD on the right hand side of the machine because this is the cover hem and it'll be working with the other part. Anything else to add about that? I don't think so. Okay, so let's go to That is going to, I'm getting, I'm getting there. We're going to do, there we there go. There we go. All right. So this is our beautiful accolade. I'll close the doors for just a second. Well, I took one of them off, but so it says accolade right there. So pretty. So we have um, same system that we had last time. I took the table off so you guys could see inside there a little bit better um, because it kind of sticks up and, and blocks the view. So I just took that off for a brief moment so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, this system here is a little bit different than uh, what we had before. And we'll kind of go over all mm -hmm. of that after we show you how to do the pin tucks. But I just wanted you to be able to see, um, if you're like, what is the matter with that thing? It looks really weird. Weirdo. It says I took it off <laughs> so that um, I could kind of point things out earlier. So we are set on sergers, so the door will close. And um, am I? Uh, I think so. And I still, think if I go to yeah, this one, they'll still, be able to see where okay. the tuck goes. Yep. So this um, is currently threaded with our C2 and C3 needles here, and then our chain. Um, looper 
is also threaded. So anytime that you begin um, with your chain or cover threads, you always want to start in the fabric. Mm -hmm. So I have kind of gotten the habit of if it's possible I start in the fabric no matter whether it's the first time or whether it's the 50th time me too in that threading and then I run into a lot less issues yes so it's when you don't start in there that you start to get some oh crap what did I just do exactly um, kind of things so what we're going to basically be doing is uh, we have a looper which is going to act kind of like um, your bobbin thread for lack of a better um, and it is going to kind of go back and forth between the mm -hmm. needles and lock everything in place. So I'm just going to put my needles right into the fabric. And I'm just, before we pin tuck, I'm going to show them what it looks like without the pin tuck. So that I have um, just a seam here. So I definitely recommend that you, um, you know, do a test stitch before you start into your project anyways. So we've got uh, pink. I, this is so hard for me. Which one am I going for? Way out there? Yeah. Right here. I can change. Do you want me to change? I just don't know where to go. Right there. Okay, right there. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so it's really hard to see that, isn't it? So there is uh, two rows of... Maybe just maybe it might even be easier for them to see it down here. Maybe. Yeah, you can kind of see the two rows of stitching. So there's the two. I have pink thread in, so hopefully you can see that a little bit. Um, and then on the back, we've got the looper that again is kind of being twisted between mm -hmm. those needles, and that's how it keeps everything in place. So when you're looking at this, um, I mean that alone looks pretty cool. Yep. I could certainly play a little bit with that. But what I want to make sure of is that I'm not pulling too tight here. Is my um, chain looper tension too mm -hmm. strong? Do, you know, so that's why you want to test stitch before you get started. Right. So um, what we're going to do is set up now for the pin tucking. And um, I'm going to put my pin tuck foot on. So just like before, We've got a little button back here that's going to drop that foot off. Helps if your needles are out of the fabric or the machine. And we're going to drop that. I'm going to move those, aren't I? See, good thing I showed them that first. Don't you think? Mm, totally. Okay, so um, we're going to I really know what I'm doing, I promise. <laughs> Some days. <laughs> Some days I know what I'm doing. Uh, all right, so a little diff, um, same here, different than some machines. Um, you've got that grip right here for your um, presser foot up and down. I now have that set there, and I've got what I think, I feel like I'm ready. Right. Am I ready? No. I'm not ready. So, um, little change here. This door on an eight thread opens. Dun, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. All right, so don't do that on a victory. Don't, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not going to do anything. It doesn't slide open it's quite the gonna, same. It's not going to do the same thing. <laughs> so, um, in your pin tuck foot, you get two different little guide pieces here. One is to do a corded pin tuck. I was just looking to see if we were out of all the light. It's this feels dark over here. It does feel a little dark. So one is going to have room for cording to go through, and one just has this little um, stitch finger there. This is the one that we're going to use, and we are going to just snap that on right in front of our needle plate and then we're going to close the door and that's going to keep it in place yeah pretty simple it's really that easy every time i do this i think am i missing something this is just too easy. it's just too easy so what that does is it rides a groove and so it'll push the fabric up a little bit in the center mm -hmm. and um this particular foot has marks 
um, on the tip here for where these two needles are going to be. So if you are marking, mm -hmm. if you made a press mark, whatever it is that you did to the, telling you where um, to actually do your pin tuck, for instance, if you have a nice press line or something like that, um, I'm just going to use that. That seems like a grand thing. I thought it sounded like a great idea, so I'm just going to get rid of this excess here. Because I don't have that much throat space. <laughs> All right, so you guys can, I think, see there's a nice press line right through the middle of that fabric. And that is where I'm going to line up right in between my two marks here, which again, equal that guy there. And I'm going to lower my foot right on top of it. Sure I am. Oh, I already did. Never mind. See, it's always better to check though, right? <laughs> All right. So foot is down, which means I'm ready to sew. Because as Dean pointed out to us earlier, we can sew with the foot up on this machine, but we mm -hmm. don't ever want to do that. And we do need to butt our fabric up to our needles because we do yep. need to start in, in the, the fabric. fabric. So I'm just lifting that foot. Um, that's an, if I can't just flick that and have the foot go, then I know the foot is down. So mm -hmm. um, we're going to just come right up there and then we're gonna lower our needles into the fabric. That's and if simple. you're staring down at your foot, you'll see what happens as soon as you do that. What you, the, goes, you get like a tunnel that happens. It, it just folds right those around. It, around that little tool that we stuck in there. Yep, and so really cool. It's actually, I don't know if you guys can see that there or not, but it literally pushes that fabric up right in the center there. I wonder if this one shows that a little bit better, maybe. Maybe, so you can really the see a little better, yeah. that yeah. it does that. So I'm just going to um, slowly go so that you guys can see. I'm gonna guide this press line and keep that right inside here. Not going super fast. As we discussed, we can chain off so I can sew right off the fabric and it's not a problem. So there we have um, a stitch on either side and we've got a nice tuck of fabric coming right up in the center there. Yep. It's that hard. Yeah, and then you can draw ex additional lines or you can just right. ride that so, along the edge or you can use the quilt bar. You can use a quilt bar, but it doesn't fit on this machine. Um, you'd think we have rulers everywhere around here. We didn't have this conversation just earlier today, didn't we? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so you can measure from your center line um, over. I'm just going to make up a line. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, so you can mark those. All right. It was almost straight. And I'm not going to use that again. You guys should see the mess that I'm making over here. So um, you're going to move from each area. So depending upon like how close distance. you want together. Yeah. So if you are working one of our patterns, um, it is, oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. You I moved wanna... the camera on you. You don't really want to get that close and see, do you? You could probably move the serger towards you if you want. All right, so now I'm going to ride my line here. So that's another option if you um, don't want to press mm -hmm. and you just want to draw out where you want your pin tucks, draw away. Draw away. No harm at all is very, very easy to use. If you are doing our project, we are recommending about an inch between them if you're doing the pillow mm -hmm. and about three quarters of an inch if you are doing the table runner. Mm -hmm. So, or if you're doing your own thing, you can just follow the foot. You or you can just do whatever the heck right. you want to do. That's usually what I do. I usually crease my first one, and then I usually just run my pin tucks next to the edge of my foot, mostly because I'm just too lazy to draw the lines. So I'm just going <laughs> to get rid of that too. Yep. All right. So I'm doing short rows so that you guys can not have to watch me sew all day. So I now have two rows. Here's the the one that I have my um, friction pen. I can just hit that with an iron and that's gonna go away. Yep. Here's the one that we used um, for pressing. So it's pretty pretty good uh, straight line there. What um, you're saying, just run right yeah, along. Yeah, I usually just run right Depending along. Depending upon, the again, what your project is, 
you can just use your foot as a guide. So here I didn't draw anything. You don't have any uh, markings or uh, you don't have the ability to put the quilt guide on because of mm -hmm. the, the machine that you have. You can just run that edge right along. Makes the pin tucks pretty close together, but I like the look of that. I think it looks cool. Don't disagree. And then you can see how simple that was as well. So once we have that groove piece in there, the machine will automatically pop that right up. Mm -hmm. You do need to make sure that you are in C2 and C3, not C1 and C2. Yep. This is specifically set up for a narrow right. Yes. Not a narrow left. Yes. Because so, the, the because the groove and the pin tuck piece will be in the wrong spot. It'll be in the wrong spot. So your needles would be um, over here and it's going to push the fabric up over here. Right. So you want to make sure that everything is nice and lined up. So you do need to be in narrow right position yes. for that. That is literally all there is to pin tucks. Right. So can you like get crazy with pin tucks and go in different directions? Does it work? I've never tried. It does. It actually does work fine because it's just fabric. So um, you will feel maybe a little bit of resistance, resistance when you get there, when you get to there, but you but absolutely we're gonna just can. do it. Cause... And if you kind of go in one direction over a variety of them, it's, uh, it's fun. Yeah. It's because that little corner there. Yeah. I didn't like the corner. Yeah. All right. So I can feel that pushing now when I'm getting to there, just keep going. I got to tuck my fabric here. <laughs> All the sweet little things. So, I mean, that look, that's a different look. That's kind of cool. Never tried that. So, you can have some fun and um, use that. However, just remember you do have a limited number of inches that you can push fabric through over here. So, yep. keep that in mind when you are creating. If, again, you're working on our pattern, mm -hmm. this is more than enough space for the piece that we are um Working with. Working with for this particular technique. Yep. So that is pin tucking. Pin tucking. Got there. anything you want to add? No. Um, pin tucks are fun. These are easy. Uh, do you want to talk about the other attachment with this foot, the little, the cording one? I certainly can. So that is, again, the piece that just has the bar mm -hmm. that comes up there. All right. This guy sits on and it does the same thing. So it's going to attach the same, but there's a small, um, kind of like a little, um, there's a hole. Yeah. But it kind of looks like a little, uh, like a tunnel. A tunnel That's the word I was using. Yeah. I was looking for tunnel. tunnel. So there's a little guy there that you can put your cording or your decorative, whatever it is that yeah. you're. So um, these would be corded pin tucks. Corded pin tucks. And I it's only, okay. only thing I have is it's this super thick stuff, which is going to be way too big for. Um, mm -hmm. So this won't go, but something like this, but smaller. And then you would feed that through the tunnel and come out the back mm -hmm. and then sew right over top of that. And it's going to give you that same piece, but it's going to be a fuller look. So it yep. won't it won't have the option of doing this. Exactly. It'll have a more rounded yep. uh, piece instead like a of fuller. Yep. A fuller cording. tuck. Yep. yep. Tuck. And yep. this is the only cording we have in here. You could use like really heavy thread, mm -hmm. um, yarn, yarns, anything like that. Um, you just need to get it through that little guy right there. Yep. So you can kind of see that actually in the camera a little bit there. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's right here. And again, it's going to guide it right into um, your position there. And then you can lift the foot and put it all the way. You, do you do yep, that? Yep. Exactly. So I was gonna say that's what I would do. Um, yep. And there's like a little groove on the back part. Your needles are down. Yeah. I think too far. There's a little groove underneath the foot where that it's will gonna just... help that ride. So it yep. would basically sit like this. You put mm -hmm. your foot down. It's gonna stay there. It's right in between. Again, this is too big. So this is just for visual. Yep. Um, not not actual okay guys <laughs> um and then you would have your fabric right over top of that and mm -hmm. it would feed in there yep so this won't work very well at all but it'll work a little bit they can kind of you can see a little bit about what we're talking about it, it's not um it's not perfect but all right well we'll see how well i can hold it because of course it's not in the guide right yeah it doesn't even like that 
Yeah, it'll be really sloppy. Yeah, I'm super <laughs> sloppy. I'm trying to hold too many things at once. Okay, and I'm not driving straight at all either. Yeah, we're going to call that. <laughs> all right. Don't do this at home. I'm just kidding. So, um, wow, really don't look at that end. All right, so you can see that we've got a very, I mean, there. I can't push that down. I'm not pressing right. it out. You've got a raised edge there inside of there. Yep. So it depends on what it is that you're looking for. Get the look. I really do like this look. Mm -hmm. um, it really gives it a really finished piece. I like the others because you can press them one way or the other, which mm -hmm. is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, so you can have a little bit of a design. It, it just depends on what you're doing it with, exactly. which one you're going to want to exactly. go with. Um, so that is... Um, that is pin tucking. Yeah. Any question? I don't see any questions popping up. Wow, this was really crooked driving. It's hard to do three things at the same time. No. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to set those aside. Um, these are the pin tucks that I basically put into the table runner. This is the excess that I cut off um, after I was all done. So I did three rows approximately. Uh, three quarter inches apart. I'm gonna just turn um, this off for a second. I think maybe it's a little. Oh, look the, at that. I think it's the light. So that is um, how that was. For me, I I just used the pink thread, and so I'm not seeing the thread. You certainly could have a pop of color in mm -hmm. your thread. It's just a matter of what it is that you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, design choice. Total a design choice. You got it. So here is um, my table runner top, and there is. Um, the the tucks going down there and that is going to be on either side yep so, so cute so simple as you see um but it really adds a huge flair to what's going on mm -hmm. absolutely all right so, so so we talk about threading let's, let's talk unthread. about some different things here so let's i like using the big scissors those are nice scissors i gotta get me a pair of those we i need something that goes like this <laughs> Instead of just my rotary cutter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Your day would not be as exciting if I wasn't here. <laughs> you are not wrong at all. All right. So a couple different things um, we're going to do. First thing, I am going to put my standard foot back on. And I'm going to put my piping stuff away. This isn't piping. My pin tuck stuff yeah. um, away before I lose one of my cute little pieces here because... That's, that's, that's no, buen, <laughs> no, no bueno, uh, no bueno. So, all right, we're gonna put that right away so nothing gets lost there. Okay, so uh, pin tuck foot. Highly recommend you have a pin tuck foot if you want a pin tuck. Yes. Can you do it without? Yes. Yes. Is it as easy? No. No. Um, so it's definitely a, um, a great guy to have there. Okay, I have on my... Um, Cover him cover hem table here so should we thread for that first because yeah there's um because we already got the needles there we already got everything there so yeah. let's just start with that and we'll go as far we'll do some of the stuff here without me turning the light back on because it is a little bit easier to see as soon as i turn that light on it is uh that is thank you you're welcome like it will go okay it's sticking to me. We'll Take that off for now because it'll be easier to see. I'm at the wrong angle to get, I can there we get go. it. All right. Okay. I was trying to be helpful so, and then I'm like, I, I elbow super you. appreciate that. Again, <laughs> um, so we've got that door here. When you are using the cover um or chain looper, you're going to need to have access to that port to make sure that you are getting where it where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. If your table has you know, a tu it tucked in, you can just scoot it to the right, yep. check, and then scoot it back to the left. We'll make you do all the work. Oh, man. <laughs> She's making this hard for me, you guys. It's not fair. Hi. <laughs> I was like, right through my forehead. Okay. Um, so, we have three rows right here. One, two, three. And we have three needle options over here. Um, so that is where they each have their own groove. Mm -hmm. There's a little clip back here and I can um, turn that and we can probably change cameras and, and mm -hmm. get a better view of that when we get there. 
So we're going to clip in the back. That is kind of, um, it's kind of the only spot you're clipping it in, kind of mm -hmm. like what we're doing over here on these. And then you're going to come forward. And then this is just like your sewing goes under, up and over. And then we clip here to go into our needles. Mm -hmm. There is no needle threader built onto this machine. There is not. There is a little handheld guy that you can use. It's really easy to use. Very, very easy to use. And if you buy a machine from us, we're going to show you how to use that. So no stress. Um, I don't generally do that. I just uh, use my tweezers. Yeah. But um, I use my tweezers even if I have air threading. So there you go. Um, that is going to be pretty straightforward. Whether we have two needles or whether we have three needles, the or threading is or one needle the yeah. threading is the same so exactly. we're going to just re-thread for that same stitch so because that's what we have the needles for how's sense. that sound sounds great all right so in the back we're going to go up and over our thread tree what does that one look like all right so we're going to go up and over the thread tree and then we are going to i generally will kind of floss it into the right position Me too. and then push to the side to get it to stay in into the area there. Mm -hmm. There's not really a click no. on this machine. All right, so then I'm gonna, just like I showed you before, go under, up, and over, and... Yeah, it's on my side. Clip <laughs> that onto, and I'm just gonna lay, lay that there. That is my leftmost needle at the point because I'm only doing the two. Mm -hmm. All right, and... What am I in? I put that in one. I'm like, what am I doing? Don't mind me. Why didn't you say something? I didn't see it. <laughs> I put it in the first one because we were talking about one, two, and three. We did. So I just did that. So um, I'm going to, again, floss just like I did before and then push to the side and it clips into the back. I might have to stand up. Apologies. Do, do, do. Why can't I get this? Because you guys are watching. All right. I can't see what I'm doing. Want to turn it more? They'll mm. I'm sure they would like to be able to see it. So let's just turn more. Okay. Look at that. Okay. Is that better? No. All right. So we're underneath. We're just going to clip that so that it is in the middle one here. Okay. We have one two, three. So we can pop that right back out. And now we're underneath and then we come forward. And then we're going to repeat for the next one. So you want to make sure that they are staying in one, two, and three grooves. We're going to come down and to the side and it clips in in the back and up and over and there's a little guy right in front of the needles that is going to keep that so i will generally bring them forward this far and then i will go ahead with the needles themselves so depending on can you they see or do we what do you think do we need more light well let's see that make it better or worse? I don't know that it helps at all. I don't know that all. it makes much difference. So what we're going to do here is front to back, we're going to thread each of our needles. Again, there is a threader that comes with the machine. I don't not use it because I find that it's hard to use. I just don't use it because I find this easy enough. How about you? Yep. And I always have my tweezers next to me, so yep. I don't always I don't have, have to go look for the, <laughs> the, the threader. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but I have taught many, many a customer how to use that cute little guy. And you can actually use that for any machine. Yep. Any needle threader you're trying to work. Yep. And if you don't have like the steadiest of hands, and sometimes that's the reason why people struggle getting that in. That tool is really great because you, your hands because your hands are steady. yep. It, you're gonna set it and just slide it down the needle, and there's a little wire that when as soon as you hit the open eye, mm -hmm. it, it pushes, pushes the, the thread, thread through, through. And, and that's literally all there is to it. So it's very very straightforward. Um, 
like I said, I don't not use it because I find it difficult. I don't not use it because I don't find this difficult and this is easier for me. Right. So um, I can get my foot put back into place. I, if I already had it off, I'll thread without it because it's just more, I can see a little bit easier, mm -hmm. but um, you can certainly thread with the foot on the machine. No problems. All right, so that is my needles. Anybody have a question? Nope. Karen likes the idea of running the pin hook. Absolutely, the that's a, I, I never thought of that just because I always generally think I need to have them farther apart, but mm -hmm. you know. You know me, I like to break the rules. Yes, you do. <laughs> But I mean, even that, you could keep an even amount of space away from the foot too. You just right. say, okay, well, I want that to be, you know, that far away and you can eyeball that. That's pretty straightforward too. So yeah. um, I generally just mark the crap out of my paper and then just yep. stitch over a line. Yeah. But that that's my shtick. But I that's a nice tip and it definitely made things very, very fast for sure. All right. So this guy is the one that kind of gets people. <laughs> yes. All right, so this machine has a, um, just like the Victory does, you lift and then this will rotate out and that is your little storage compartment for um, your miscellaneous tools. Mm -hmm. Needle threader, screwdriver, all of the tweezers, whatever um, it is. So when you're sewing, it is best to have that closed. You don't really want your threads way over here. No. It will apply a little bit of different tension on the threads if they're that far away, but. <laughs> Karen said she's behind the video. Go figure, my battery ran out. No worries, no, <laughs> no worries. worries at all. So again, we're gonna go up and over um, our thread tree to from the outside in. And um, I have threaded this both directions. I don't really think it matters. And I don't believe that it really matters. So if you are struggling to go from the inside out here, um, don't worry about it, just go the other direction. Yeah, I always go from the outside in. So, I was taught originally that this was the correct way, but sometimes it's just a pain, so yeah. I skip that. But um, from the inside out is what I was taught was the original correct way, but I have done it both directions and mm -hmm. it stitches just fine. Right. So once we have it through the little circle, which is right here, there's a little notch. We're gonna go behind, if my foot is still up, we're gonna go behind that notch and then we're gonna go up and over our dial right here. And then there's a little hook on the front of the machine. And then I just kind of pull and put that over there. Mm -hmm. Usually I'm sitting in front of the machine, so I keep going, but. Yep, and you need um, to pull a lot more thread than you think. Yes, you do. Um, because it's got a long way to go. Yep. Even on this machine, it's got a long way to go. All right, so up and over your thread tree, through the circle, which is right here, behind this notch right here, and then up and over your dial. That's it. Mm -hmm. It's not complicated um, and it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to turn back here and I now need to engage my port. So to make that work, very similar to what we did last time, we held a button in and then turned. This one, we just flip the switch. That tells the machine we want to thread. We move from surging to threading. Mm -hmm. And now I turn the hand wheel and click, it is in position. This is a cover or chain. So we now have three ports here. Mm -hmm. All right. And so we need to use the C, not the U and the L for the upper and the lower. Yes. C is for cover chain. And it's also gold. Gold, yes. And um, this is going to come out in a really strange place. So um, you're, you're probably going to be like, it didn't work. Don't pay attention to what we're doing here. We're going to open the side door. And I and, want you to look right here. Yeah, that's where the thread is going to magically appear if we have our tail thread long enough. <laughs> Which is why I said, um, make sure that you have access to that if you are threading. Because if it doesn't make it that far, it's not going to create a stitch. Correct. So you need the port in there. Going to make sure that there's plenty of a tail there. And now listen for that different sound. And there you go. And there's all of that. I've seen people that say you have to pull that out and do, I never leave do. It there. I just leave it all mushed in there and close the door. Yeah, the only time I've ever had trouble with this machine is when I pulled the thread out. Yeah, I, I just leave it alone. Yep. All right, so now we are threaded. So as I mentioned before, 
we can um, only thread. Nope, we can only stitch a cover or chain if our needles start in the fabric. Um, we have one more thing we have to do. We do. We have to put our upper looper down. I have to do a lot of things. <laughs> I got to put a door on. I gotta... <laughs> but um, just remember mm -hmm. that that is, um, you always want to make sure that you're starting, starting in. in. Yep. Yeah. So we've got a couple other things because my, my table won't even go on right now. No. Nope. So when you are, I guess I can turn that back a little bit more, huh? Um, we've got an upper looper here, which if I put my table on, that is above where my table sits, which mm -hmm. means my table door is not going to close. Right. All right. So this is my sewing table and this is my cutting uh, piece. Very different. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, cover hem. Yep. <laughs> Overlock. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I could put this on here and show you guys here. We'll snap that in. If I try to put that into place, it just flat out won't go there because my looper is blocking the road. Exactly. All right. So I'm going to pop that back off. So if you ever um, are doing a cover hem and your door won't close, you probably missed a couple steps. Yep. Yeah. Either your upper looper is still up or maybe your even your blade is still or up. Or maybe your blade is, is, is blocking the road too. So right here is um, I can turn this to the down position. This is going to be my selector for that. But notice nothing actually happened. Right. Um, did we talk about this last week? No, because we didn't have this. I didn't think... Um, to re do we, maybe with re-engaging the blade, it doesn't matter. Mm -mm. If you're doing your looper or if you are locking or unlocking your blade, you won't see anything change necessarily um, until you take a full rotation of your right. of your hand wheel. So um, I can't do that. Because <laughs> we're still in threading. I'm still in threading. So anytime the machine's not functioning like you think it's going to, there's usually a reason for that. <laughs> um, this one in particular, um, I can't close the door with my lever in threading and I also can't turn my hand wheel. So all I have to do is flip that back to surging. My ports, now my little tubes that were out so I could thread have shifted back inside the machine. So now everything has the ability to move, mm -hmm. including my hand wheel. So here's my upper looper and there's a little click there and this pops out and now my lower, my lower looper is still active, but my upper looper is positioned out and out of play. So I am going to reconnect this and slide that right over. Now let's open this up and talk about this gap. Yeah, that happens a lot. All right. So if your previous stitch was a wide overlock mm -hmm. and you switched over to cover hem and you put your table on and you have this gap right here. I don't know if you guys can see that super well. There you go. There's literally a gap. It won't go all the way to the left. The reason is that my blade position is actually pushing it and it's not allowing it to do that. So all I need to do is reach under the table and move my blade and then it will close that and I won't have that gap sitting out like mm -hmm. that. It'll allow it to go all the way to the left. That's it. That's it. Okay. So I do for uh, cover stitch want to make sure my blade is below. So uh, you'll want that on the lock position, which is right in front there as well. So we've threaded our chain looper port. We've threaded two needles in this instance. We're back on surging, which doesn't matter whether you're surging or cover hemming. We're mm -hmm. not threading is the main key there. Correct. Now I can close my door. So I've got my table and I'm all set there. My width of the stitch is irrelevant. Yep. That is based on my needles. Whatever needles that I put in is what's going to happen there. You, of, like we were just saying, that is also your blade position. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that it is all the way in so that your table can close. The bottom dial down here, this one right here, this is your length. So depending on how tight you want your stitch to be, two and a half, three, whatever right. um, is your kind of common, mm -hmm. not that you can't make it different, mm -hmm. um, but think of that kind of like your sewing stitch in your stitch length the there. Length. Yep. Same, same concept. And it's still applicable to the cover hem part. So uh, absolutely, it will make a difference. The other buttons over there really are not. Correct. But this one still is your stitch length. And unlike, um, again, we have no A, B, C, D um, here, but we do have a tension dial on each side of the machine. This one is for the needles. 
lo and behold, it's right by the needles. Mm -hmm. This one is for the looper, which is right where your threading is. Yep. So you can adjust that um, as you need. Um, it is a little different than some of the other machines. Yes. There's no numbers on this one, um, but there is numbers over here. How are we doing? Good. Okay. All right. So once we have that, I am going to turn my um, hand wheel until my needles are up so I can place my fabric underneath. I'm going to lower my presser foot. And then I'm going to stitch into, um, before I actually hit the, the pedal, I'm going to go right into that fabric. So those needles are starting in the fabric. Do you know how to describe what happens if you don't? other than a big blob of mess or it just doesn't connect. Yeah. It the, doesn't grab the looper, but I don't know how to. Yeah. It's kind of like a, it's like a braid falling out for lack of better description. Um, like if you tried to twist two pieces of thread together and expect that the braid will hold. And as soon as you let go, it just goes. Poof. Yeah. So it's kind of like that. It just doesn't form the stitch at all. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not really sure what the fabric deflection in there why that actually makes them something but I, I think it has to do with there's something for the threads to sort of grab onto um but i, I don't i'm just grasping kind of like when you're basting on and just stabilizer there's not enough for it there's to just not enough fit. for it to create yeah it needs something it needs to, that like to create that it. original loop yeah um there so when you are just getting started you stitch part way into your fabric and then you can check back and make sure that you're getting um, the stitch that you want. Mm -hmm. You can see here, if your fabric is getting sucked in and you're tunneling, mm -hmm. you need to loosen some tensions. You've got exactly. um, some issues going on. Otherwise, um, you can go all the way to the end and you can chain off. So you can see that this is, maybe you can't, I don't know, but this is not just a single strand or even three loose strands it's actually all wound together so mm -hmm. it is now set yep which means that i could technically i don't personally but i could technically um not start in the fabric right it's the better habit to just start in the fabric and then you don't ever have that oops i forgot mm -hmm. um and if you get in the habit of always starting in the fabric then you will have a lot left um issues exactly so. all right so uh, if you made some adjustments, you can run another one. So I have, yeah, I have some pieces of scrap next to my suit that have so many different stitches know, right? in them. Because you just need a little bit to make sure it's what you know what it is that you're you're looking for. Yep. So I have just a small smattering of different fabrics because mm -hmm. I use different fabrics, and you want to test in the same type of fabric that you're going to end up with your project on. Yep. Make sure that you um you know don't test on jean and then put clips and cotton in. It's not going to necessarily be the same thing right. there. So test on whatever it is that you have there. So that is um, the cover hem. Cover hem. And this is a narrow right. Um, so let's, instead of, I don't think anybody needs to see a wide, but let's do a chain because there's a yeah. significant difference between a, and we have to take the needles out anyways, <laughs> to do uh, four thread. So we're going to take one needle out, and it doesn't matter what needle you take out, um, one, two, or three, because a chain stitch is just one needle, and it is uh, one looper, so. Don't lose that. Okay. I'm going to need it I'm in a minute. Guard it with my life. I'm going to need it in a minute. So there's a couple ways that you can um, play with that, if you will. Um, it will, uh, sew out. Mm -hmm. Um, it is not because it's already in the little twist there. I think I lost my, hold that thought. There you go. Um, because it's in the, the twist, it's not going to just pull right. one thread out. So even because we can stitch on air. I generally will just sew until I get rid of yep, me too. Um, whatever that thread happens to be. So I'll I'll snip and pull out forward yep. anything that I can, but then whatever's left down here, I just sew exactly um, out of the way. So I did not rethread anything. All I did was snip some threads, 
stitch line just does not want to go where I want it to go. Whatever. It, you can stay there. Okay. It's bothering me because it's all the way to the left, <laughs> but um, it doesn't want to. That's better. Okay. You okay now? Um, I think I'm all right now. All right. So we now have one needle in and we have one looper. Mm -hmm. Now, did I uh, mess up my Yep. I did. So what do I need to do? Start in the fabric. I need to start in that fabric, which is, again, why it's so important. If you just do it all the time, <laughs> then it's not an issue. Exactly. You don't have to go, do I need to do that this time? Did I do that last time? Um, this is um, kind of like your sewing stitch. So you can sew a regular seam. So... Um, I don't know if they can really see that very well, but this one is my narrow, and this is just what's called a chain stitch. So there we go. There we go. So that's just what it looks like on top. And then if you flip it around to the bottom, you can see what the chain stitch looks like. And there are different adjustments on the machine that you can make. And if you're looking at your little dial on the side, it says chain stitch and cover stitch. So you can definitely uh, tweak, that. tweak that a little bit. Yep. So you get a heavier, because it's twisted, yep. um, around your top thread there. Um, it's going to be more narrow, but you're still going to get a heavier look. Even though there's one thread there, mm -hmm. you're going to get a heavier look than what you have on the top. Yep. For a chain. So that is the chain and the, in this case, narrow cover. Um, super simple. You can swap between them. If I wanted to put another needle back in, I could very easily do that and just thread the one that I needed. Exactly. And you can have up to three needles yep. in your cover hem side. So you can have just the left, just the center, just the right. You can have just the right and the left. Yep. Or, I'm sorry, just the right and the center, just the center in the right. You can have just yep. the right and the left, or you can have all three. Yes. So lots of options. Yes. What, I, I lost track of how many. It's okay. You can do wide in any combination, which is just a left and a right. That one's easy. And yep. then it's your narrow that has this, a little bit. The, yeah. So the you can shift do... of where it's going to be positioning. Yep. It's your center needle in either this one or this one. Yep. And then your chain in either position. Is pick a pick pick one. spot. Yeah. Pick, pick a, a spot, spot. Any spot. So I, I generally will chain and center just, I don't know why. Because it that makes more sense to me, <laughs> but that's that's all that really it doesn't yeah, matter. Does not matter. It does not all. matter. Nope. So that is how you will do uh, your cover side of the machine and everything where your thread positions are, your looper down here. It's all going to be marked in gold, and on your little card, all of those stitches are also marked in gold. Yep. So anything using one of those is going to have a gold bar at the top of the the stitch information. Absolutely. So. Thank you, Karen. Um, and I just want to note, now that we've started stitching, there is no thread in there. Right. It's all been brought up, and it's part of this little loopy yeah, chain it guy. Stay in it the does basket. not stay there. So if you look in there and you're like, oh my gosh, it's gone. Yep, it's gone. It's supposed to be. It's all good. So the last thing um, is the threading for this. So to change over, it's not super complicated. We're going to snip the threads that we have. You can sew those out or pull them out okay and then um you are stuck to the thread <laughs> yeah. we essentially need to undo what we did so what we, we just have did to change yep. our plate we're going to change the plate unlock our blade uh, we're going to change this yep um so this comes out and um, I'm just going to push down on the little lever in here, and that slides right out. And then we have to put our upper looper back up. So, um, so this is going to go an upper looper. to the up, and this is going to go up. But notice, Nothing maybe, maybe you didn't change. see. Yep. Um, my looper, even though I turned this dial here, this hasn't shifted, and I turned this dial, but this didn't come. The only way for that to happen is to turn... And now everything is back in play. Yep. Okay. Kind of just like your sewing machine, right? When you drop your feed dogs, they don't come back up until there's a call. Until for there's a, yep, you got to engage them. Yep. So, all right. So we've got all of 
those different pieces and we've got all of the threads back here. The only thing that you need to um, keep in mind, and we can I can just maybe just do one. You think that's yep. faster? Yeah. Um, so I have um, a needle here that uh, you need to take out. So here's the thing that I hear uh, often. Um, they unthread them, but they don't take their needles out. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Right. So I am going to, let's just do wide because I can. Maybe. Sorry, there's back of my head. Okay. All right. Uh, you do want to tighten these screws. Don't leave them loose because they can vibrate themselves out. So I don't know who was in here less other than me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just make sure. All right. So uh, settings down here, we've got um, our blade. We can um, adjust to wherever you would like. My stitch length is probably going to be somewhere in the field of where it was. That's not right. going to be a huge thing. Um, and I have my left um, needle in so I can be on A over here. Makes sense. So uh, otherwise I could follow the card and, and do something different. Mm -hmm. So I have left needle, which is going to be playing with its neighbor here. And just like we did last time, we're going to click in the back. There's that click and then it locks into the position. And then we just go up and over right here. There's a small hook right there to keep it tight to the needle. And then we're going to lose your tweezers. I think I put them away. And then we're going to thread that guy there and get that out of the way. So that is, I'm already done with the needle. I'm good to go. All I need to do is my ports over here. We're going to tell it we want to thread and then turn the hand wheel towards you. Your tubes will come across. You may need to turn farther than what I did. It's mm -hmm. just depends a, on where the needle it's is. Totally dependent upon where that that needle is. Um, and because this one is automatic, the thread system is completely different than what we had before. We can actually prep both of our loopers and yep. push them through at the same so time. So I can get myself a nice tail. There is my upper looper thread. Again, we're going to go up and over my thread tree. We're going to clip and kind of floss right here so it's in the right spot. Click until that's locked into the back. And then there's a little tiny hook right there and I pull that in. Now, probably have too much thread, but hey, better too much than not enough. I'm going to drop the tips into my ports. There's one. You can do these separate. You can undo what you did. That's always an option. I like to do that, obviously. All right, thank you, ma'am. All right, so we're on threading. My tubes are engaged. We're just gonna push this button. And? And our upper thread didn't come through because it didn't come through all the way. Our subsidiary looper is because engaged. that's what we oh, look. It popped right out as soon as I moved. It. <laughs> so subsidiary looper we did talk about um, mm -hmm. last, last week. week. That was for the flat lock. So yep, that would be me. I'm the one that left all of this mess. So it did actually come through. It just got blocked by that looper. So or by the subsidiary. So there's our upper. And here is our lower. Again, this is a me thing. I just, I'm a little bit of a thread snob, I guess. I can't handle all, being all over. But the machine will work if you just let them sit down there. I just can't stand it. <laughs> I just can't stand it. All right, so my looper threads are now to the back of the machine. I've got um, my two ports ready to go. I switch back. I kind of need a table of some sort. This one is going to be my blade cover and it snaps in. So here's um, the difference there. And then this door will close. Once I have that, dun, 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 dun. better? Okay. 
think so. Yeah, that should work. All right. And I'm like, where's the football right? It's actually on the floor. <laughs> All right, so we've got a beautiful three thread wide. Mm -hmm. And if I turn that inside out, if I were constructing something, um, I've got that nice. Yeah, that white seam. thread you're seeing is. That is my stitches from, from before. Before, sorry. Um, so I stitched right over top of where, where I was because it was the piece that was sitting next to me. Exactly. So um, we've got that nice finished on the inside. And then you could, you know, if that's your sleeve or your pant leg or whatever it is that you're doing, you've got yep. that nice guy there. So that is um, literally. I know it really is as easy as we make it seem. It, it just, um, it's so cool. It, it really is just so, so cool. I, I just, I'm always amazed at, at the ease of using it. Um, having taught different types of serger classes, the, um, whenever we have a serger class and there are multiple brands of machines in there, I always feel really, really bad for the baby lock people because I'm like, okay, you're going to do this. And they're done in five minutes. And then we spend the next 40 minutes helping 40 minutes, everybody, else everybody else to get, get caught up to where you're already at, to get where we're already yep. at. So it, it really is that easy. There's just nothing um, complicated about it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. No. And you don't have to understand any of it. You just follow the card. Mm -hmm. You say, I want my stitch to do that. You do it. Or you call us and you say, I want to do this. What stitch do I want? We tell you and then yeah. you do it. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's it's so literally easy. that straightforward. So, so easy. So that is um, super quick um, how to use both sides of this beautiful machine. Again, mm -hmm. this is the Accolade and it is on sale for $2,999 and it comes with a six foot kit, your inspiration guide. Um, and, uh, 60 day love of knowledge. Thank you. Threads plus you get, um, 10% in Labu bucks back to you. So in this case, it'd be that two ninety nine. So a nice uh, chunk there. And then you also, um, through this month will get, um, a $250 mail-in rebate when mm -hmm. you register your machine on babylock.com after your purchase. That's right. So lots and lots of goodies along with this. You could certainly add on um, the love of sewing to any of the machines if you would like to. Absolutely. Um, last week we talked about the Victory. Mm -hmm. And just a reminder, the Victory is still on sale for $14.99. You still get that inspiration guide, that love of sewing, and then those 10% uh, back at Lubu Bucks, which is $149. And then we also have... Um, a six foot kit that you can add on to that, just uh, 199 and that same love of sewing. So pretty much um, all of them are the same yep. price. So you There's get- There's only one that's different. I think that's the Euphoria. Yep. And then we have, this is the machine that we're gonna talk about. This one and the next one are the machines we're gonna talk about next, next week. week. Yep, we're gonna um, do combo. Yep. We each have a machine in front of us. Exactly. <laughs> so we'll have the Baby Lock Acclaim. If you have the space to have two sergers and you are a garment sewer and you like to be able to put that finishing touch in it, um, the Acclaim with the uh, Euphoria setup is like the dream team. You get the best of both worlds. Absolutely. Um, so and the there, Acclaim. And you saw how easy it was to change the threading yeah, here. Yeah, so it's, not, a, it's with, not that it's hard. With this setup, you wouldn't need to do that. It no. would, unless you were changing thread colors. Um, you just keep going. Exactly. Um, you can bounce between because unfortunately when you're creating something, you don't get all overlock stitches and then all cover hem stitches. You do tend to have to go back and forth on um, different yeah. things. So you don't always if you have them. the ability to have the two machines, that's just less changing over that you have. Exactly. Sure. So the Acclaim will be the machine we feature next week. Um, the Acclaim is $19.99. We are giving you the inspiration guide, that six foot kit, and then that 10% back in Labu Bucks, which would be the 199. We have the Baby Lock Euphoria. Again, this will also be the, the machine that we're talking about uh, next week. This is gonna be the cover hem only. So when we first started stitching today, we were talking about that cover yep. hem side. If you that, got your three thread wide, mm -hmm. the two thread narrows either side or your chain stitches, this is going to do all of those yep. and all of the techniques. Yep, and it gives you that extra space. It does. 
Yep, and it does have a needle threader. Yes. Slightly different than the Triumph, but, but it, it is have... a built-in needle threader. Yeah. And air looper um, exactly. on that machine. And our bundle is going to be the love of knowledge, that 60-day, then 10% back in your Labu Bucks. And then there and is threads. a thread collection that we're giving you. So we've got a really nice package for that. Um, you can add a 10-foot kit to that in that sewing membership or that warranty, whatever you want to call it. This one is a little bit different. Like Lisa was saying, it's only $199 um, because oh, it is for two years, yes, instead of the four. And then we have the cream of the crop here. So to answer your question, Connie, this is the top of the line machine. Uh, this is another eight thread. So today's uh, accolade is an eight thread. Mm -hmm. This is the other eight, eight thread. thread. Um, and this is everything you could possibly need in one machine. Yes. It is so fantastic. It has air threading for your loopers, like everything else that we've seen, but it also has air threading in the needles. Mm -hmm. And the only other machine all five that has air threading for the needles is the, is acclaim. the acclaim. Yep. So, but yes, all five needles, which is really, really great. And um, Baby Lock is offering a $500 mail-in rebate. So that comes directly from Baby Lock, not from us. Um, but you know, we have a great bundle for you as well. Um, you can get that inspiration guide, um, that same six foot kit we've been talking about, um, but we have also added a one and a half inch belt loop binder, the 15 millimeter woven double fold bias binder, the overlock table. We're going to talk a lot about that when we get to that machine. It'll make a lot more sense. Yep. Um, the fabric guide, that 60 day love of knowledge. And then we are doing that 10% of the machine up to $300. So that would be that $300, would be the full 300. Mm -hmm. yep. on this one. So that is our bundle. And then of course you could add that love of sewing as well. So um, that is what we have for our bundles. And um, those are going all through the month. Yep. Um, we do have some special baby lock financing on the machines and that ends on the 14th. Yes. So. So soon, if soon. you if you're looking to have some extended financing, and it, that's uh, zero percent. Yes. Um, on that, so if you're looking to do some financing, you'll want to give us a call soon so we can get that uh, processed for you. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a bunch more machines coming in. We do. We uh, went through. We only have like two left in our little kitty back there. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, They're all we, coming we've, back. We've in We've got a whole bunch more coming in, and and uh, we were not told that they were not in stock. So mm -hmm. we believe that should be um, very soon mm -hmm. that we will see that um, give me one second. Just put her on hold. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> that was an important question though. Yes. Um, so yeah, that is, um, that's what we have. That's what we have. Yeah. So, so if you guys have any other questions about anything we talked about, of course, you know, give us a holler. Yep. Um, this is the, um, table runner mm -hmm. sampler. It's not finished. The backing's not on, but the front is all complete. Um, you'd have a choice of a ruffle edge or a lace edge and, um, we'll have, that's part of the pattern that that is included in our kits so you would have all of the materials that you would need to do that um, and those are the techniques and and what you'll be able to build um, so it's a nice sampler for absolutely. sure absolutely uh, thanks right. so much for watching we had a lot of fun and um, we'll see everybody we'll see you next time next week all Bye. right have a great one thanks for coming in